Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I'm going to show you the coolest fire pit you've ever seen. You guys know I like to go around to farm shows and trade shows, spend an entire day or two days walking the show, and then highlight the coolest things I see at the show. And I would say that this fire pit is the coolest thing I've seen that didn't have its own engine. So, what makes it so cool is the aesthetics, the build quality, and the portability. So let's open this thing up and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so it looks like the first box is our end caps. So this entire product is made out of 3 16 inch thick steel. Very heavy gauge. So on this side, we've got an eagle with a flag. Then on the other end, we've got the stars and the 1776. Now mine has this American theme to it because I chose that, but they have a couple of other designs you can get. There's like a mountain man design and a fisherman design, and it's just a matter of what's cut into the plate. As I open this up, I'll tell you what I think is kind of a cool story. When we bought this property, we didn't know that this area was here. And this is about 50 foot behind our screened in porch at the back door. And there were a bunch of little trees in between the house and here and a lot, some brush and stuff. It was a little overgrown. I came out here and started cutting those trees. I was actually pulling them out with the stump bucket on the tractor. And I was looking back behind us. Is that concrete back there? And I, I kind of worked my way back here and saw that there was this concrete wall and a concrete floor from foundation of some old building, I guess. But turned into a really nice grilling area where we have this fire pit from Lowe's, a gas grill and a charcoal grill. So here we've got more of our American flag theme. I did a video the day I found this and cleared it all. At the end of this video, I'll put links where you can order this product if you want to. I'll also put a link to the video where I discovered this hidden patio area. I thought that was a fun little project. So we've found the sides in the end. I'm guessing we've got the top and the bottom here. Yeah. This rolled steel for strength. And this part says, we the people. And the bottom tray. The way this thing is put together You've got two slots at the bottom that your bottom tray sets in. And you have three slots at an angle up each side. And your side panels set down into those. So we'll start with the bottom. Okay, that went in really easy. And we'll do this side. Now, in addition to the three slots over here, you've also got three slots along the bottom that lock it in. All right, very quick and easy to this point. Now the manufacturer recommends, or their setup video shows two people doing this last step. So I'm gonna do it with two people, then I'm gonna test and see if I can do it by myself. So there's a grab handle at the bottom used to lift that up. So now we're slid in place, but on both sides, the panel needs to lift up to slide into this end. And that's where two people really come in handy. Uh-oh, we got a little problem. I didn't pay enough attention and my 1776 is facing the wrong way. But that's all right because I want to see if I can do this by myself if I didn't have anyone here to help. So we'll take it back apart. It's a lot easier to take back apart. So we'll take it apart and do it again by myself. Okay, we are back to the point 
where I felt like I needed help before. Now I was thinking all I need help for is to lift one side. So what if I just put a couple screwdrivers, lifted it up, put a couple screwdrivers in between the bottom and the side, and then go around and lift the other side. So let's try it. All right, that side's held up. I went back and looked, and not only did I put this side on backward, but I put these sides on backwards. The rollover goes out. <laughs> Luckily, it's not that hard to take it apart and put it back together. Well, by putting the panels on facing the wrong way a couple of times, I got a lot of practice and I've become somewhat of an expert at assembling this. Now, let's get some wood and get a fire started in here. So I normally cut my firewood to 16 inches, but inside dimension on this is 31 and a half. So I'll probably start saving some firewood between 24 and 30 inches just for this. But in the meantime, I took some of the pieces I've been cutting off of my live edge. And I'm doing woodworking in there. Thought I'd run those long ways and then put some of these shorter blocks on top of it to build the fire, and then we'll just put the firewood on top. And I went to Walmart and just picked up a cheap fire starter here. Be a good time for some of Mike Morgan's magic wood chips, huh? But these are called, I've never used them before, called Tumbleweed All Natural Fire Starter. So you just put these in between your dry wood. Since this is a big fire, I'm gonna put a couple on each end. And we'll light those. And this gets air from all directions, so it shouldn't have any problem drafting air. Okay, we got that. Put some more of this on top. Go ahead and put a couple pieces of firewood on there. Those definitely took right off. Yeah, if this was, if I knew this was 31, I could have taken some of these 16s up to the chop saw and just take a little off of them. But I think that's gonna take right off. I'm just gonna go ahead and build the fire on it or build, stack all this wood up on it. If you start off building it all a long way, those 16s fit in here the other direction when you get to the top of the stack. That was so easy to build a roaring fire in here. It gets air from every direction and it's got a natural pyramid shape. So it's just a really easy fire pit to build a, a big fire in for how small it is. And I would say the top will be hot enough pretty quick that we can actually put some food on here and start cooking. Now the design of this is that you can either put your cast iron skillet on here or you can cook directly on the grill. And they said you want to treat this like a cast iron skillet in the way you take care of it. I probably only needed about 25% of the wood I put in there. I've been sitting next to this just relaxing for an hour and a half and it's still so hot I can barely get up to it. So, the manufacturer told me that they designed this for you to cook directly on the top like a grill, but it's way too hot for me to put my hot dogs up there right now. Then I ask them, then I ask them, how do you care for it? They said, treat it like cast iron. 
which means I should probably season it anyway before cooking on it. Look at the way that butter just explodes. All right, so as a fire pit, this is fantastic to sit by and stay warm. Looks like it's going to work as a grill, too. I'm curious over time how it'll hold up, but there's no way to know that today. But for today, I think it's a great product. I love the design. I love that it's made here locally. And it was nice getting to meet the people who, who work at that company. I think it's awesome. I love the branding, the American flag stuff and I'll give you an update over time how it holds up. Now this is steel, so it will rust if you leave it setting outside. Of course, my other grill and my fi other fire pit are both rusty, so you could cover this with a barbecue grill cover, or because it comes apart, you could take it in your garage and store it there, or if your grilling area has a, any kind of a cover over it, that'd be ideal and would prolong the life of it. Otherwise, like I said earlier, the manufacturer told me to think of this like a cast iron skillet in the way I care for it. But I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.